In August 1944, German forces decided to move captured paintings and about 27 tons of gold ingots from Paris to a safe location. The gold is then transported to the small Bosnian town of Grohovo where it is put into the bank vault. German forces arrest all townspeople, while a little boy escapes. 51 years later, during the conflict between Bosnia and Serbia in 1995, a team of Navy SEALs, United States Naval Special Forces, consisting of Matt, Kurt, Stanton, Jack and Ben, were assigned to capture a Serbian general named Melik. Kurt and Stanton were sent to enter the military base under the guise of journalists, while their other colleagues Matt, Jack and Ben would infiltrate secretly through the river, through the passages and then place several bombs. Meanwhile, due to the tight security at the base, Matt and Stanton had to be searched until they were almost naked. Sometime later, Commander Petrovich arrived and allowed them to interview General Melik and the results of the interview would later be shared with the world. After checking the sound and camera settings, Matt pretended to check Melik's mic again, and the kidnapping then began very quickly, swiftly, and in a timely manner. They then rushed to escape down the river, but there were already some Serbian troops guarding the boat, and inevitably they had to fight back. Since their escape plan failed, they went back inside and found the Serbian garage. Out of the many cars, they thoughtlessly chose a tank and then they escaped by breaking the wall. Matt then asked for helicopter assistance from headquarters, because he couldn't escape with the original plan. But unfortunately the request was rejected, because it was too dangerous and they finally had to try to find their own way out. Despite a very epic escape from many enemy attacks, they ended up surrounded in the middle of the bridge. Matt then told Jack to shoot the bridge railing, as the only way to escape was through the river. Eventually, they all managed to escape by slipping through the water. Matt and his friends managed to subvert and seize the enemy boat. A moment later, their headquarters responded to their request, stating that the pickup point back to the headquarters would be changed. They finally arrived at the U.S. frontline base in Bosnia and were greeted by Admiral Levin. However, there was not even a word from him and he only showed a look of restrained anger. The next morning, Matt and his friends were called into Levin's room and they were all reprimanded by Levin. The mission was supposed to run in secret and without a single witness, but instead they hijacked a tank and killed many troops, even to the point of destroying almost half of the city. What they had done would certainly make the war situation even more heated and Levin, like it or not, had to go to his superiors to find a solution. Although Matt had explained the situation they were in at that time, which required them to adapt to the enemy's attacks, Levin remained unconcerned and gave them three days leave. Despite this, Levin still rewarded Matt and his teammates with a bottle of champagne for each of them, because after all, their main mission of capturing Melik had been successful. They all then celebrated the success of the mission with a drink at their regular bar, where they were served by a beautiful waitress, a Bosnian girl named Lara, whom they had met many times at the bar. Ben flirts with Lara, but unfortunately Lara rejects him immediately. After the celebration, they then return to the base, but Stanton said he didn't want to go home yet, because he felt full and he wanted to take a walk first. Stanton then ran to Lara's house and they enjoyed the night together. As it turned out, the two of them had been in a relationship for quite some time and out of his love for her, Stanton then asked her to come to live with him in America, but Lara declined it because she did not want to leave her country, even though the war was still raging. Lara also intends to help development in her community through her newly established foundation. Later that evening, Lara's younger brother, Malenko, arrives with his thug friends led by Boris. They force her to give them a mysterious valuable package, but Lara does not want to give it. Stanton, who heard the commotion, immediately fought them, but unfortunately one of the members pointed a gun at him. Reluctantly, Lara then showed the location of the package to save her lover, Stanton. But as they left the house, there was already Matt waiting in front of the house. It turns out that Matt has known about their relationship for a long time and luckily he was in front of her house at that time. Shortly after that, Lara showed the package that Malenko and his gang were looking for, which was a 12.4 kilograms gold ingot worth 150,000 US dollars. Stanton was surprised and wondered where she got the gold, and Lara promised to explain everything to him the next morning by taking him to dive into a lake. Underneath the lake were shipwrecks, statues and ancient buildings, as if a city had sunk. Lara then told Stanton about Bimo, her late grandfather. A long time ago, Bimo hid in the city and stole a gold bar, although he was caught and chased, fortunately Bimo managed to escape and bury the gold bar. But unfortunately, Bimo heard the voices of the townspeople including the voice of his mother who was being executed by Nazi troops. Shortly thereafter, Bimo met a soldier from the Bosnian partisans who intended to avenge the Nazi atrocities by blowing up the dam and drowning the entire city of Grohovo. 
After arriving at a hill, the partisan commander gives a bomb detonator to Baimo as an act of revenge for his mother's death. After that incident, the existence of the city of Grohovo was increasingly forgotten, but not for Baimo who tried to tell it to the local residents. But no one believed the nonsense story. So Lara asked Stanton and his friends to help the people of her country to rise from the war with that treasure. Stanton then explained Lara's plan to his friends, and according to Baimo's story there were approximately 2,000 gold bars down there. If each bar is $150,000, the total is $300 million. However, Matt was not sure if this mission would be possible, as the lake was in the middle of the enemy territory, and the location of the treasure was 46 meters underwater, which would require a full set of equipment to dive in and bring out all the gold ingots. Moreover, the information was only based on a late grandfather's story, and such a mission would be very risky. Lara also said that she could not guarantee the success of the mission, but she was sure that the gold really existed and she showed her seriousness to help the Bosnian people with the treasure. Lara promised to divide the gold equally, half for Matt and his teammates, and the rest for the Bosnian people. After much deliberation, Matt finally agreed to help her, even though this mission was a covert mission and could endanger his crew. Matt felt this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to help the Bosnian people without going to war. The strategy began to be prepared, Stanton explained that according to Baimo's story, the gold was stored in a vault in a bank, and he had seen that vault while diving with Lara. Jack was then assigned to find out the type of steel of the cabinet based on the serial number that Stanton saw. Then they assemble a welding machine from the flea shop of Lara's acquaintance, and they have to trick a truck driver at the base into lending them a truck without a permit. They did it all because this was a secret mission. After getting some of the equipment they needed, Matt, Stanton and Lara headed to the lake to put some of the equipment by the lake, but when they got there, they saw a Serbian troop ship on patrol and they then immediately went to hide. Fortunately, the enemy did not find them. After taking Lara home, Stanton and Matt then returned to the base, but unfortunately Lara's gold bar had been taken by Boris from her house. Once the diving equipment, welding tools and vehicles were ready, it was just a matter of finding a solution on how to get the treasure out of the lake. Because surely those gold bars are very large and heavy, plus the Serbian army is patrolling the lake every 35 minutes. Ben then explained his theory. They would wrap the gold in a cargo net, then tie the ends of the net to a cargo parachute that was opened in the water, then air would fill the inside of the parachute and the gold would be lifted to the surface of the water. However, Ben was still at a loss as to how they would get the treasure from the surface of the lake to the shore. Jack then came up with the idea, he would contact his two friends, Rainey and Detroit who were good at piloting a helicopter, the two of them would then be told where the drop and pickup location on the lake was. Jack then promised $1 million for both of them, so that they would not leak this covert mission to anyone. However, their mission did not go according to what they had planned, because this lake was in Serbian territory, and seeing an enemy aircraft coming, Serbian soldiers then launched an attack on their helicopter. Elsewhere, due to the chaos of Melik's kidnapping incident, Commander Petrovich continues to hunt Matt and his friends down. Especially after he saw Jack's helicopter on the lake. Petrovich and his men then traced their whereabouts, until he finally caught Boris and his friends while they were carrying the gold. Petrovich then gets information about the treasure in the lake. We are back at the United States Army headquarters. Levin called Matt and his team into his room to explain the results of the discussion with his superiors. Levin knew that Petrovich was hunting the five of them because of the Millet kidnapping incident, so in order to avoid further complicated conflicts, Matt and his team were told to relocate to Mannheim, Germany. With great reluctance, they then began to pack up their belongings and prepare to leave within the next 36 hours. They also cancelled the mission to retrieve the treasure, because they're running out of time. While enjoying his drinks, Ben came up with a new idea to build a water dome using a church bell found in the lake. The bell would be filled with oxygen and would serve as a temporary base during their diving missions. The idea would definitely cut more time, as they wouldn't have to go back and forth to the mainland every time they ran out of oxygen. According to Stanton's estimation, by implementing Ben's idea, the mission would take approximately 8 hours, and they would still be able to return to Mannheim on time. However, when they were about to leave for their mission, Rainey and Detroit said that they couldn't take them that night, instead they would pick them up when the mission was over the next morning. Fortunately, Stanton and Jack were good at twisting and turning and managed to trick the transport plane pilot into taking them to the lake. Meanwhile, Lara had also gotten ready and headed for the lake. Elsewhere, Petrovich, who is still hunting Matt and his friends, finally arrives at Lara's house and takes her brother Malenko hostage. After searching the house, Petrovich finds a diving suit and a map in Lara's room. He eventually learns where she, Matt and their friends are. 
Petrovich and his troops then headed to the lake. Meanwhile at the headquarters, one of the soldiers notifies Levine about Jack, Rainey and Detroit who are discussing a secret mission. Levin then calls Rainey in Detroit to his office to dig up information about what Matt and his friends are doing. At first Rainey didn't want to confess and Detroit just kept quiet, but under the threat of being fired by Levine, Rainey was forced to tell the truth. It turns out that Ben's idea of a water dome proved to be a good one and they managed to create a temporary base inside the church building, supplemented by planks of wood from the surface that Lara had brought along for support. The next step was to drill through the walls, then destroy the vault and finally collect the gold. However, it turns out that their plan isn't so easy to execute, they all need to get it done as soon as possible because within two hours the air in the dome will run out and the walls could collapse at any time. Sadly, they only found ten gold ingots that had been scattered in the cupboard. Jack then blames Lara and Stanton for falling for Lara's grandfather's fairy tale. Heavy-heartedly, Jack called Rainey in Detroit to ask them to prepare to pick them up. However, before they left the place, Matt saw the stones arranged in different positions and there was one stone with the writing upside down. Matt then returned to the water dome to get a crowbar and opened the stone wall. Inside, there were many human skulls a box with Nazi symbols. Matt then found the 2,000 gold bars. Meanwhile, the banknotes and some diving equipment from inside the lake were floating on the surface of the lake which made Petrovich very suspicious, he then ordered his men to dive. While underwater, Lara was attacked by Petrovich's men, but fortunately, Matt and his friends arrived at the right time and managed to kill them. After all of Petrovich's soldiers were taken out, they went on to complete the mission. However, one of the parachutes used by Ben to get rid of the enemy suddenly popped to the surface. Seeing this, Petrovich was even more convinced that his enemies were deep in the lake and he immediately threw several grenades into the water. Despite being bombarded by grenades, fortunately no one was hurt. A new problem then arose, in order for the parachute to continue carrying gold to the surface, they needed one more oxygen supply because the air inside was running low. Matt then forced himself to take the remaining oxygen tank in the church and he had to go through the rubble from the explosion. But as it turned out, Petrovich continued to throw grenades and almost drowned him. After many hurdles and obstacles, the 2,000 gold bars were finally brought to the surface, and their next step was to wait for Rainey's helicopter to pick them up. But once on the surface, Petrovich, who was waiting for them, immediately fired an attack at them. Matt tried to fight back by firing his gun, but none of his shots hit his target. Before they knew it, Rainey's helicopter came to their rescue. Admiral Levin was generous, he sent Rainey to pick them up, but still, he was furious, as this was the first time in the Navy SEAL's history that a civilian had gone on a mission. Levin also asked them to explain how this mission could happen without his knowledge. Matt then explained that the gold would be used for the development of the Bosnian people after the war. Even so, Matt and his troops have still violated many of the Navy SEAL's codes of conduct for carrying out covert missions. In the end, Levin did not punish them, because they had also finally completed one of the main missions, which was to find and kill Petrovich. As well as their great achievement in obtaining so much gold. Levin then announced their achievement to the public and explained that the gold bars were stolen by the Nazi regime 50 years ago, and they would be returned to France. Lara was also awarded a Medal of Honor for her service in this mission. Instead of saying the actual total price of the gold was $300 million, Levin announced that the gold to be given to France was only $150 million, because it turned out that Levin had asked his brother-in-law, who was an expert in finance to pass the remaining $150 million and distribute it in the form of checks for Matt and his team. Each of them got $3,800 but Lara got $149 million. They just smiled when they saw the amount of the checks they got, and finally they gave all the checks to Lara, because the treasure was not theirs after all and it would be more appropriate to use it to help the Bosnian people. Deeply moved. Lara thanked them all and to celebrate this success, Lara would treat Matt and his friends to a party at her bar, 